on Triple M's Rush Hour. How are you, mate? You big bowling ball. You good? <laughs> <laughs> it's Jay Z Clark. Your best call of the year. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm one? sorry about that, Bill. Dude, no, take that. no you don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. I apologise. Uh, no. You don't you need just, to apologise. I liked it. Cylindrical. Circular. <laughs> Right. Just stop there. <laughs> hey, do you know we have to? Um, do you know whose birthday it is today? Seventieth birthday. Uh, One of the icons of the game. Sam yeah. Newman. Then seventy three. Close. Oh. The great Michael Malthouse. Vicky Malthouse. And how do you think he celebrated his seventieth? Yeah. On the Terps. Playing marbles. <laughs> yes. He'd be on the Terps. <laughs> he'd be invited the Rat Pack over. Did he? The Rat Pack. He hasn't gone down, has he? So, Who's he got? Didac Shorey. Yes, Heater. Heater. Our man, Daisy. Oh, Daisy. Oh, oh, oh. The premiership captain. Swanee. Nick Maxwell. Swanee's there. Do they go to a Taz? Or a, a nicer restaurant. A nicer restaurant. And they all got round Mick. That's, oh, that's fantastic. Yes. That is good. And he, we've been talking about succession plans oh, this week a bit. So He looked after those boys, and they're looking after him. I like that. Them. He loved Speaking them. Speaking of coaches, yes. Adam Simpson. Good oh. man, premiership coach. But uh, the West Coast Eagle thing, yeah. we're, we're just reading the tissues in front of us here. Yes. Looks like it's heating up. Looks like he's in trouble, fair to say. The board are seriously considering, as Eddie Maguire revealed last night on Footy Classified, they're seriously considering parting ways with Adam Simpson, the great premiership cope at West Coast this year. Let's be honest. It's been the complete shemozzle. It has. 500-point losses. They got smashed in the derby. Yes. And up until now, everything out of West Coast and um, the headquarters there is that he's contracted for two more years. We're going to stick with him. But I think it's reached a tipping point, clearly. So, so we read it's going to be $4 million tax they'll yes. have to pay. Yes. And, and tax. they've got plenty of money. Explain the tax well, to the people. could potentially be even more. So they owe him $2 million for the next two years. Well, I don't. But then they've got to match dollar for dollar the football club up to $500,000 over the soft cap spend, right? So that's and that oh. and that then that then doubles to two hundred percent once it goes past oh, that five hundred grand threshold. Oh. So it could be five more than five million dollars. In other um, words, the money that you choose to spend over and above yes. the allocated cap, yes. you need to pay tax on. Got, yes. yes, it's trying to stop clubs from saying, yeah, yeah. "Well, we got plenty; we'll just pay as much as we want." Wow. And if it's a lot, if it's plus, if it's more than five hundred thousand, they tax you double. So it's two hundred percent. So that's a lot. West Coast is the richest club in the country. Yep. So really, money is not a huge issue. It's who they're going to uh, bring in and trying to revitalise the place. Who would year. they bring in? Well, over there, who would coach the West Coast cool. Eagles it's right a, now? It's a, it's a very, very interesting space. Well, what about Jamie Graham? Who's been pumped up for his connection? We don't know him, but we, we out don't. of mind, out of sight. Yeah. What about Dean Cox? He's been assistant to horse for a long time. Stevie J really rates him. Yes. Um, Ash Hansen is Ash another one. Hansen. Highly rated mm. at Carlton, former West Coast Eagles player. Yeah, so there's right some eh? Eagles connections there. Of course, you got Adam King, uh, not Adam Kingsley, Adam Uze, of course. Suma still putting up his hand. No, I think he's, uh, he's in the media space oh, over right there. Now. He's a columnist. So, now. What, where did Simo sit with this? Because I, I know Adam very well. Yep. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of him as a person as well as as a coach. I, I would have thought, Jay Z, and I have not spoken to him. Yep. That he would say, if I think I've lost this group and I can't take this group any further, yep. I'm tapping the mat. I don't reckon he would sit around and wait for no. the club to come to him. Yeah, and so that's the opportunity. He he would be reading um, the writing on the wall at the moment, and he he would be reading these reports. So he's got the opportunity over the next two weeks for there to be a really classy farewell, um, to yeah pay pay thanks to all the fans and all that sort of stuff. So you, I think while he's still in the job for the next two weeks, he can use these mm. this next fortnight as a bit of a goodbye and okay. a tribute to him because he's a premiership no, coach. and he's been a star and we all love him. Yes. All right, Adam, I've got Goldie here. What's that? Goldie. Hmm. Goldie. What were you talking about? Goody. Goody. Oh, Goody. Yes, Goody. Goody. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What's, What's going, on? going on with Goody? It, because... it is an extraordinary story, right? So we've got a former club president in yes. Glenn Bartlett mm -hmm. is over there in Western Australia, helped set the club up for premiership success in a way. So played a... A key role in that football club throughout a difficult time. Got Paul rules to the club. Absolutely at war. Mm. At war with his coach in Simon Goodwin. Yeah, um, terrible. Now, Bartlett says, you know, he, he was concerned about uh, some of Goody's alleged behavior. Simon Goodwin, the football club, says those allegations are completely false and baseless. And he said that consistently uh, for three years. And Bartlett also unhappy about the way he was moved on from the football club. So this is not just sour grapes. Mm. This is 
you know, a, just an incredible fallout of a president at a football club. It's in the federal court. I know. So explain this to me. It's been going on for a while. Explain this to me, Jay Z. There's, yep. there's falling out, and unfortunately, it happens at footy clubs a lot. Yep. People, I call them bitter formers, yep. bitter former directors, presidents, CEOs, coaches, players. It, it happens too often. Mm hmm. But there's a difference be- between being a bitter former and raising the earth yes. upon your departure. Now, yes. before people go, it's R A Z E, not R A I S E. So it's raising the earth. In other words, just absolutely scorching it, right, scorching right? it. Yeah. So that is what he's doing. He, he's trying to finish the joint, and that is. It's a footy club. It's a not-for-profit organisation. What are you doing? How do you feel when you walk back into the North Melbourne? It happens very rarely, but when I do, I love it. Because I love all the people in there and you feel like you've been a part of the journey. That's what people talk about, the friendships and the bonds and the home, right? He will never be welcome in that footy club ever for as long as the current people there will be there. So you feel for Simon a good one at the moment. It's a legal battle uh, which will play out. And he completely denies any of the allegations. Not only him. Emphatically. Everyone at the club denies yep. all the uh, allegations. Clearly, Glenn was not happy well, about the way he was exited. Exactly. And the stuff exactly. that we've all read, like his yep. partner saying he saw Adam exiting the September club, looked like he'd had, you know, he was, he was on the wrong side. Yep. That, that describes my exit of the September club <laughs> every year mine. for the last yes, 15 mine. years. Craig Kelly's. Mine's oh, too. my God. <laughs> Everyone who <laughs> exits <laughs> the, the September club looks like us. that. That's all of us. Rabsies even. Rabsies. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Always. Joey. <laughs> you should have seen Bernie <laughs> oh, my last God. year. Actually, he couldn't walk. Oh, exactly <laughs> right. So, so right. that is extraordinary. Yeah. Jay-Z Ooh. Clark has stuck around. Plenty more footy news <laughs> yes. to get through. All right. So Kenny Hinckley stays two years. Yes. So what does that mean for Josh Carr? Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Because he was considered almost a hot tip for the Richmond job there about a month ago. But when you look at that midfield, Connor Rosie, Jason Horn Francis, Zach Butters, and he has moved back and forth across the country a fair bit. Went Port Adelaide to Fremantle, back to Port Adelaide, and Fremantle coach back to Port Adelaide. So they have been across the country a fair bit. I think settling the family and then coaching this young midfield probably for another two years when they take over. It's can you have a succession plan without calling it a succession plan? Because that's yes. what this feels like. Well, yeah. the only way you can is if the main man 100% mm. buys into it. Yep. So if Ken and, and Josh are close, yes. I don't know if they are, but if they are, they are close. and then Ken says to him, mate, I've yep. got two more years here, and yep. then I guarantee you that at that yep. point, <laughs> I will make sure that you are the next man in, yep. and I'm moving on to do something else, which I know is what Paul Ruse did with Simon Goodwin. Yep. Yeah. If that's the case, then yes, it can work. But can I add a but? And I reckon this is the mistake in the old Collingwood succession plan. What if Port Adelaide win the next three flags in a row? Mm. Then Ken goes, I'm actually feeling pretty good. I might want to stay. And then the Port, Ad- and Port Adelaide would have to ratify that decision. And Josh has to wait a bit, right? Yep. Does that have to, that's what that would have to happen? Well, only if Ken wants to continue. Yeah. I and mean, if, and if, you would suggest he probably would if they yeah. won three flags in a row. But it's, it's one of those ones for me where the main man has absolutely got to say, the, this is on. what I want to have yep. happen. Yeah. Yep. And if he says that, and he's really, you know, a big fan of the bloke underneath and says yep. he will be brilliant, which yep. I know is what Rusey did with Goody, yeah. then it worked a treat. And I think Josh's viewpoint at the moment is that he's, there's still a bit for him to learn. Exactly. Under Kenny so Hickley, you know John. what he's done? He's parked the car. He has. Oh, he set himself oh, up. Oh, oh, no. There we are. <laughs> Park the car. I didn't, yeah. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. Well, I didn't know whether there was something else to no. it or. Now, tomorrow uh, night, 1v2. Oh, Massive, isn't it? And Collingwood missing some of its biggest names. So we know Jordan DeGoey. Um, Bobby Hill. Out with the glute injury. Bobby Hill didn't train the other day. They're missing Nick Dacos and, um, Darcy, Moore. and Darcy Moore already. So there are, there are big changes. There is a fair chunk of quality out of, of Collingwood. We know Brisbane. They have an issue at the MCG. Haven't been able to win there. They've been much better at Marvel Stadium. I reckon Brisbane start this as favourites, to be honest. And I think dollar ninety each. each. Mm. I think they jump out of the gate as the team to beat, and I think they're they're the team to beat oh, in this. Got one. everything to play for, as have Port Adelaide. That no, that second spot in the yeah. home final is exactly. massive. And yeah. can I be a conspiracy theorist for yeah, a second? You always are. Would Collingwood prefer to play Brisbane? in a grand final at the MCG or Port Adelaide. I've got a bit of a theory that Collingwood would almost prefer Brisbane to finish second and to get through to the grand final. I know a lot of water before the horse no, and Rabs a, a lot of water under the bridge. The <laughs> assumption that the Collingwood get there themselves. And as a yes. Collingwood fan, I know what happens on grand final day. And we usually <laughs> yes. lose them. You don't want to borrow that. No. I'm just, I'm, I'm, 
conspiracy theorising right. a little bit, but it's going to be massive. Have a look for Jacob Ryan, the debutante for Collingwood. You will not be able to miss him with a mullet. Think James Sicily. Oh, right. Oh. Uh, Carlton market. and Carlton. Essendon, I know we're, uh, we're running the clock down here. Yes, Carlton, I think, all intrigued around the forward line. Harry Mackay looks to be back, obviously back from that knee injury. Jack Silvani potentially as well. Those teams will be confirmed in a little less than an hour. Do you buy into the argument, Bill, that Carlton could have Carlton's forward line could be better, oh. sorry, yeah. <laughs> without no. without Harry Mackay. No, when the big games come, mm-hmm. finals time MCG, yep. you need Kuno and you need Big Harry there. You need Big Harry there then. I know they've been going along nicely and there's different avenues to goals without him, but in big games, the big forwards, they still are big. They don't get smaller or slower. Because when the, <laughs> the opposition defences used to complain, Collapse on Gaza. Yeah. Did you find you used to I get out, out there? Not really. <laughs> yes, exactly. When you yes. statistically look See, at it, no. That's why you need the big forward. That's why Carlton want him in because it means that they won't be able to collapse on Charlie as much. That's mm-hmm. clearly what they're doing at the moment. We saw St Kilda play two and three defenders on him at time a mm-hmm. couple of weeks ago. So if Harry can get off the chain, he plays. Um, they like that combination. We, we uh, on Triple M Football went back during the COVID times and recalled two games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The 1989 Grand Final. The Bunny Chop. And the 1994 Prelim Final, the famous one where yes. Gary Ablett kicked the goal after the, the siren. siren. Yes. And cumulative. So that's eight quarters. <laughs> yes. Fat touched the ball, I think, seven times. I don't <laughs> think that's right. One sniper bullet. No. He got hit with a sniper bullet and fell to ground. What in the about pocket. today, Rabs? What did we watch today? Um, it was no, Brisbane no, versus Collingwood, wasn't it? None last of those year? games. 1991 <laughs> no, Geelong no. St Kilda he, elimination he final. Eight oh. goals. Yes. And big plugger kicked nine. Oh, well, fat got eight. <laughs> well done. And he kicked one, and then I said. Funnily right, enough, we weren't talking about. And we mm. won that. I went into Bill's house one day, and he yes, just had no, the Western didn't. Bulldogs kick after oh, the. So it was just on repeat. God, it was just on sad. loop. It was. It's it was. all jumpy. The mayor of Geelong. <laughs> it's sad. Now tell us about the gambling, please. Yes. Yes. So. We know last year, uh, that in this uh, police investigation is ongoing, there was an allegation against a former AFL umpire, of course, and whether he leaked yes. uh, some information, um, which made everyone feel a bit jumpy about the whole yes, AFL yes. Brownlow medal uh, process. And the VGCC, the Victorian Gambling and Casino Control Commission, today um, released some beefed up protocols, basically instead of being able to put thousands on the three vote market, so round two, B, B. Brownless, yep. three votes against Hawthorne or whatever, mm-hmm. the, the amount you can win is significantly reduced. So they've capped it to $250. It means that the market will still be alive. Um, there was a strong thought that the whole market would be scrapped entirely because of these corruption fears, but they will still um, exist. You can only win up to 250 on them, which well, is probably not a bad call. All right, Jay-Z, before we go, yep. the extraordinary Matilda's uh, ratings numbers yep. last yep. night and the previous game against France. Yep. Does that change the daytime, twilight into nighttime AFL grand oh, final think- narrative? A hundred percent it does. I reckon they should have made the call already. Why we aren't playing the AFL grand final in at least a twilight time slot has got me completely. When you look at these beat. numbers, mm. 11 or 10 million people, 7 million watching, uh, four and a half million, four, five city metro. We c- we've got to give our best game access to that TV. Why audience. are they so slow to this? I don't know. I reckon when Andrew Dillon confirmed that another day grand final this year, it took people at AFL headquarters by surprise. How many NRL daytime grand finals have you watched, Jim? None. None. How many nighttime ones have you watched? Mm. Especially when the storm are involved. Exactly. Can't, can't get enough of it. So it goes in reverse. Well, right, Guess who plays his 100th game for Sydney? <laughs> the lizard. Yeah. The slitherer. Yeah, the slitherer. Can't game. make that noise <laughs> into a mic. <laughs> 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 Sound like a lizard. Good to see you, Jay-Z. Good on you, boys. <laughs>